All right, so the final big topic uh, from chapter 14 is going to be titrations. We're gonna start talking about titrations of strong acids. Uh, titration um, is the idea of, it's a reaction, type of reaction, so we'll, we'll look at a simulation in lab, uh, we're doing this, where the slow addition of acid or base of known concentration to an acid or base. So generally the goal of a titration is to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. You have a solution, you know, for example, it either contains an acid or a base, but you don't know the concentration of that solution. Um, and so what we do is we use the fact that we understand acid-base chemistry, right? We know how acids and bases react. And so what we do is if we know how much of reactant we add, and we know how far the reaction goes, that allows us to then kind of figure out how much of the other reactant we have. Right? We know one reactant, we know how much reaction we've had, we can figure out the amount of the other reactant using stoichiometry. So the overall setup of what a titration is going to look like, we've got a picture of kind of the generic setup uh, on the right there. And so we start out with what's called the analyte. So say you have uh, NH3, you have a nitric acid solution. And I want to know the concentration of this solution. Um, in general, uh, you know, you, it could be a, a matter of you measured, you created the solution, um, but you want to get a more precise measurement. Uh, maybe you measured it using a balance that isn't that accurate. You measured out some solid or you used glassware that wasn't very efficient or very accurate. And so you want to get a better, better measurement. Um, and you can get that from a titration, right? Or say you think it's like 0.1-ish molar, but you want to know if it's 0.100 molar. You want those extra sig figs. Um, the other thing could be that you collected the sample somewhere. You found a nitric acid solution and you want to figure out what the concentration is. That's a very real possibility. So what we do is we're going to choose a reaction that this, rea that this chemical does, right? HNO3 is called nitric acid. So we might as well choose a reaction that we can predict. And acids and bases have heavy, uh, heavily uh, predictable chemistry. So we could just pick a base, KOH. We're going to react it with potassium hydroxide. Um, and so we can do now, we can predict that we would form KNO3 uh, and water. And so then what I can do is I can put this KOH, uh, I could, it's called my titrant. This is what I'm going to use in the titration. Uh, and so what I do is I put it in a uh, piece of, in a, with a solution with a known concentration in a piece of glassware called a burette. It's kind of like a graduated cylinder in that it has markings on it for measurement, but you'll note there is a dispensing tip down at the bottom. Um, so if we look right here, the, that's where we're looking at the dispensing tip. You can cause it to run out. Um, and so what we do is we add KOH until we react all of the HNO3. Um, and so we do this reaction until all of the HNO3 is gone. And since we know the concentration of the KOH and we know the volume we added, we can figure out how much of that we added, which allows us to figure out how much HNO3 was in there. Um, so when we're doing uh, titrations, we're running this process, um, we have a couple of different, a couple of language we want to build up. The first is the idea of the equivalence point, right? One of the whole points of a titration is we want to, we we're going to put in some titrant. We're going to put in the KOH of known concentration. We want to put it up to a certain point. And the equivalent point is going to be the point in the titration when the moles of titrant added is equal to the moles of analyte that we started with. Okay, so uh, the moles of KOH added is equal to the moles of HNO3 that we put in. This equivalence point comes from the fact that we can see that we have HNO, whoopsie, HNO3 reacts one to one with KOH. So if we have moles, whatever, if we put in a certain amount of moles of KOH, if it's equal to the moles of HNO3, we basically guaranteed that we don't have like a limiting reagent situation and all of my reactants have just reacted. I have no reactant left. So how do we know what, where we hit the equivalence point? That indicator comes in. So an indicator is some sort of spectator chemical that undergoes a visible change to indicate when the equivalence point is reached. Um, generally what we use is some sort of molecule, for example, that is colorless in acidic solutions but pink in basic solution. So it literally changes color under different conditions. And what that lets us do is figure out like, oh, this has changed. 
we've hit the equivalence point because we no longer have an acid. We have a base or a basic solution because the color, the solution is now pink or anything, something like that. Okay. So if you were to do a titration, and so say you started with 50 milliliters of your, uh, uh, your analyte, you want to know the concentration of HNO3. And so you add KOH, you pick KOH as your titrant, and you add it in, and you keep adding it until you get that color. Change. That color change indicates the equivalence point. And so say you were using 0.265 molar KOH, usually you use high con or high, uh, highly accurate, highly precise measurements of that uh, inline, uh, the titrate. And then you added 45.6 milliliters. You're doing a really, really good uh, experiment, really recording your data very well. Um, and so you have this information, how much you added. So the goal of titrations is to figure out the concentration of HNO3. So what we want is a concentration. So that would be a molarity. Right, so we want moles per liter. Well, the thing is, we already have the liters, uh, or volume, we don't have it in liters, but we have the volume, that was the milliliters of HNO3. So we know that value. So then uh, the question is, what's the moles, right? Because if we have this, we just need the moles. And well, the whole point of the equivalence point, the equivalence is between the moles of the different reactors. That is the, what is equivalent in that word equivalence. And it's the, so the acid moles are equal to the base mole. So those are equal to each other. Um, and then what that lets us link into is, well, what is the moles? Because really what we wanted was the moles of HNO3. We wanted the moles, we need the moles of KOH then. And we can see that the moles of KOH, it comes from the concentration and the volume. So we want the molarity of HNO3. We know the volume of uh, the volume of all the things we added, and we know the concentration of the KOH. So what that means is we first solve for the moles of KOH that we added, whatever was in your burette, whatever you added in. Um, we plug that in up here. That gives us moles of HNO3. They're just equal to each other. We plug that into here. That lets you solve for the concentration of the nitric acid. Um, whatever that unknown concentration was, this is going to be the flow for always working with figuring out the concentration from a titration, right? This is the kind of the purpose of doing a titration and figuring out that concentration of your unknown. So solve for the number of moles of titrant equal to the number of moles of analyte, calculate the molarity of the analyte. That is almost always going to be the algorithm, always going to be the process that we're working on. So if we want to run a titration, there's a couple of uh, uh, necessary uh, steps if we want to design a titration. Um, there must be a known equation for the reaction, right? We have to have stoichiometry, that equivalence point. Uh, we had to, you know, moles of one reactant was related to moles of another. Um, so you have to have, you have to know the equation. That's why acids and bases work really well, because you can easily, you can very uh, straightforward predict that reaction. We also want the reaction to be rapid and complete. Uh, rapid means we don't need to want to worry about kinetics, right? We just want it to happen. And complete means we want to be able to use stoichiometry, not rely on doing some sort of ice table or some sort of nasty business like that. Uh, we also want a clear-cut change in a measurable property at the equivalence point, right? When the rea reactants have combined exactly. Um, something along the lines of some sort of noticeable change, uh, something that changes, uh, say, the color of the solution from an indicator describes whether or not it's acidic or basic. Um, and also, we must always have accurate measurement, not accurate measurements. That's just kind of technical. Um, doing the experiment, you need a burette, you need those sorts of fancy things like that. Um, but all of these things lend themselves really, really well to acid-base chemistry. Known equations come in acid-base. Um, Acid-base acid, uh, acid -base reactions are very fast. You don't need to worry about kinetics. Um, they don't always use stoichiometry, but you can make them if you use strong acids uh, and strong bases. Uh, and then you have that clear cut change in measurable property because you can go from acidic solution to basic solution. So pH can change. And so if we think about, we're going to be acid and base titrations. They work, acid bases are great choices for titrations. So if we want to think about how would we track the progress of acid base titrations, how would we see that change in the properties, right? That clear cut change. Um, and, you know, one of the things we, if we're adding in, say, a base, NaOH or KOH, how do we know that that volume corresponds to the equivalent point? 
equivalence point. And, you know, if you think about what changes about the system when the amount of added base equals the amount of initial acid, right? If you have some acid, all of a sudden you've added base, all that acid is gone, all of your acid and base have reacted. And so the whole point of using acid bases, not only is the chemistry predictable, not only is it fast and you can use strong things to drive the completion, but also you can always monitor acidity using pH. So if you measure the pH of the solution, you can see exactly what the properties of the solutions are. If you start with an acidic solution and you end with a basic solution, at some point in time, you're going to change over, right? You're going to go through that neutral or go through, uh, you know, the pH 7. So somewhere you're going to change over from being acidic to basic. That's where you're going to see that clear-cut change, that equivalence point. All right. So generally, when we talk about doing titrations, we're adding in acid and base, um, and we're going to add some sort of volume. So we can see the x-axis on this plot is volume of base added in this case. And we can track our progress using pH. We can always measure pH along the way uh, to see how it's changing, to see what's going on with that. And so say we're going to do the titration of 0.2 molar HCl with an AOH. I'm going to add in. I have uh, 0.2 molar HCl. Uh, I'm going to start that off. In this case, normally we do titrations where we don't know the concentration, but for instructor, instructional purposes, we're just going to say we know the concentration. It's 0.2 molar. Um, this is in the beaker. And just for reference, this language that we have right here, that word with NaOH means that is in the burette. The NaOH is in the burette. You're titrating HCl with NaOH. So whatever you're titrating is down in the flask or beaker or whatever and the NOH is up in the burette, that's what you're going to be adding in. Okay, so um, if we're going to do this, we're going to think about following along, we'll think about what's the pH of the initial solution. And if we ever want to know the pH of a solution, we want to think about, well, what's in it? Okay. Well, if you're titrating HCl with NaOH, the initial solution is just HCl, right? You just have HCl in there, and HCl is a strong acid. Okay, so the only thing you have in there is HCl, and that's a strong acid. So we know in strong acid solutions, the concentration of hydroniums is equal to that initial concentration of HCl. Um, in this case, that's 0 0.2. So the pH is the negative log of 0.2. We get 0 0.7. So as we would expect, we have an acid, a strong acid solution of a decent high con decently high concentration. So the pH is very low. Okay, the pH is very, very low, um, and so this is a very acidic solution because we have strong acid in there. Okay, so we have, that's how we're going to start out. Okay, so what about as the reaction progresses? And so as we start to talk about these titrations, what we really just kind of want to focus on is generally going to be what's the pH at kind of the important points, or kind of as we follow along. And so we initial is where we start, and obviously we end at the equivalence point. Uh, that's where we're done with our titration. So you want to think, what's the pH at the equivalence point? Well, what's in the solution? We know we started with HCl, and then we added NaOH, right? We started with HCl, and we added NaOH in the process of this titration. Once we got past that initial point, there's NaOH in the solution. And if we think about this, we have HCl and NaOH, and we're making water and NaCl, just doing some acid-base chemistry. And so we know the definition of the equivalence point is that we have equal amounts of each of my reactants. So the amount of HCl is exactly equal to the amount of NaOH. Because I have equal amounts of reactants, they fully react with each other. This is not an equilibrium process because these are strong acids bases. I just make product, and the product is water and NaCl. Okay, so the only thing that's in the solution at the equivalence point is a, so it's a sodium chloride solution. That's a neutral salt, so the pH is 7. So at the equivalence point, when I do an HCl and NaOH titration, the pH is going to be exactly 7. So at the equivalence point, I know my pH is 7. And so I don't have to necessarily, usually we stop at the equivalence point if you're functionally doing a titration. But we can think about what's the pH far past the equivalence point. Okay? And, you know, well, what's in solution? Right? We always want to think about what's in solution. Well, all that's left is hydroxide. Because when you were at the equivalence point, you had reacted all of the HCl. You are now adding base. Just keep adding base, right? You've reacted all of the HCl, all of it's gone, and you just keep adding more and more and more base. And so we know what that means is it's just going to become more, the pH is just going to get higher and higher and higher. It's a strong base. You got a lot of it. So way past the equivalence point, 
this is just a really basic solution because all that's left in there is sodium hydroxide. And so that's base hydroxide floating around. You have a strong base. So one of the things that we can see, which makes sense, is as we add base to the solution, the pH goes up. Over the course of a titration, if you are adding base, the pH has to increase um, because you're adding base. You have to make the solution more basic, which means the pH is always going to increase in these cases. You can do a titration where you add acid, and in that case, the pH will constantly decrease. All right, so kind of got the beginning, got the equivalence point, and way past the equivalence point, we can kind of figure out the pHs, uh, what those values are going to be. So what about in between those points? So what we want to do is we can explicitly look at it. We'll say in the titration of 55 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl, what is the pH after 15 milliliters of uh, 0.30 molar NaOH has been added? Um, so this is the 0.2 molar HCl. That was what we were looking at the titration of. So I've just chosen some kind of uh, numbers for everything else. Uh, we're just looking at going through the titration. I'm going to see if we can calculate the pH along the way. Uh, before, at the beginning, we kind of just do our standard uh, pH equation. But now we actually have a reaction. We're going to want to figure out what is going on here. So let's get this set up real quick. All right. So I'm looking in the titration of 55 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl. Pull this back a smidge. Or you can actually get this up top. Wonderful. In the titration of 55 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl, what is the pH of 55 milliliters of 0.3 molar NaOH has been added? Um, and so we can see here, um, we want to know what is the pH. And so generally, you know, and when we want to know the pH, we have some equations for that, but we've kind of complicated it now. Historically, it was always just negative log of hydronium. And then what's going to make the hydronium? But now we also have our buffers with the henderson hasselbalch equation. So we also want to kind of come back to this, well, what in solution? Um, and what can those things do? And so we can see that what is in solution is going to be HCl and NaOH. And so we know that those things can react. And we got an acid, we got a base. Those things love to do chemistry. This is a strong acid, strong base. This reaction is not an equilibrium. It's a single arrow. H2O, that's a liquid, plus NaCl. And so what we want to know is what the pH is. So the pH is going to be based on what the concentrations of all these different substances are, um, especially the acids and bases. We can see that this is water and this is a neutral salt. So really, I don't care too much about what the concentrations of these are as far as the pH goes. If I wanted to know how salty is the solution, um, that would be something I care about. But if the question is just what's the pH, this is all neutral. So I don't really care too much about that. But I definitely want to know what is going on here. What are the amounts of HCl? What's the amount of NaOH? And so while this isn't in equilibrium, this is a fully all the way to completion product, all the way to completion reaction, what we still can do the same kind of idea of figuring out how much do we have uh, and kind of follow what do we start with, how does it change, what do we end up with at the end. But instead of using concentrations, because this is a stoichiometry problem, I need moles. So what I need to do is I need to figure out the moles of HCl and the moles of NaOH. That's going to come from the fact that I have a volume and a concentration. So let's do that um, over here. I want to find. Okay. Uh, I want to find my moles of HCl, and I know that that is going to come from the fact that I have 55 milliliters. 55.0, sorry, milliliters. I want to use my molarity. 
So 1,000 milliliters per one liter times 0 0.20 moles HCl per one liter. Right, that's just interpreting my molarity, which then tells me 0 0.011 moles HCl. Similarly, I want to get the moles of NaOH. That is going to be, at this point in time, I've added 15 milliliters. Let's do the same conversion. But this time for the molarity, we use the actual the NaOH per one liter. And that tells, if I do that one, I have, I've added 0 0.045 moles of NaOH. So what I can do then is I can take those mole values and I have 0 0.011 moles of the HCl, 0 0.0045 moles of the NaOH. Those are my initial amounts, and they're going to react. And I know they're going to react to completion. It's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So whatever I have less or fewer moles of is going to be the limiting reagent, and it's going to run out first. 0.011 is greater than 0 0.0045. So this is a lower number. These are going to react completely. That's going to disappear, 0.0045 moles. This goes to zero. This goes to 0 0.0065 moles. I would also make some NaCl and some water. But again, I don't care really about those in this context because I only care about pH. If I was looking at dissolved chloride or dissolved sam, those sorts of things I would care about um, because, uh, but in this case, it's only pH. And they are, that's neutral, so I don't really care. So NaOH uh, have runs out. I have none of that left over. All I have left over is HCl. This is my acid. Okay? So what I want to think about then is I want to know what the concentration of this is. Right? These are in moles. If I want to get pH, I need to go back into concentration. So I need H concentration of HCl. That's going to be this moles right here. 0, 0, 0.065 moles of HCl divided by the volume in liters. And I want to be careful um, because I need to figure out the total volume. It's not just the 55 milliliters. It's going to be this 55 milliliters and this 15 milliliters that were added together. So I figured out the moles come in here. I got some total volume. That's going to be 55. 5 milliliters plus 15 milliliters, that's equal to 60 milliliters. My milliliters then, I know that I have 1,000 milliliters per one liter. I need to get into liters for the purposes of calculating uh, molarity. So I have 0 0.060 liters. So I can take that 0 0.060 liters, come back over here, and I get that the concentration of HCl at this point in time is equal to 0 0.11 molar. So functionally, we started with 55 milliliters of 0.2 molar HCl. We've added some hydroxide. Okay, so we should expect that this concentration has gone down. It's gone down to 0.11 molar. We now have 60 milliliters. Um, so we have a larger volume with a lower concentration because we've added some sodium hydroxide. And the water from the sodium hydroxide solution has also been added. Um, that's all in there doing its job. So what we really want in the end is pH. So uh, all we're just left with a strong acid solution. Uh, the only thing that's in there is HCl. Strong acid, which means that the concentration of hydronium is just e at, uh, we'll say, equilibrium is equal to the HCl concentration initial. That's this. And so then my pH is 
a negative log of 0 0.11, and that is equal to 0 0.97. And then if we remember, we uh, just did it uh, before, the pH at the start is 0 0.70. And so we can kind of think about this context uh, of, of what's going on, okay, what's, what's kind of cooking in all of this. Um, where we are at in the in the entire titration and kind of what the context is. So we started with the 0.2 molar, we had a pH of 0.7, and we're starting to run the titration. And we can see that in starting to run the titration, we're adding NaOH and we've added some in. And so the amount of HCl is going down. The amount of HCl is going down. Um, the NaOH completely reacts. So even though we're adding some, it gets reacted immediately and then we don't have any more. And we're left with just less HCl than we started. With. That concentration necessarily decreases. That concentration narrowly necessarily decreases, and the pH goes up. And we can think about how close we are to the equivalence point. The equivalence point, the amount of NaOH added, would be equal to this initial amount of HCl. So we're, we have not yet reached the equivalence point. This is still an acidic solution. We're working our way there. But we've made it a pretty decent progress, right? We started with 0.01. We now have 0.065. So we're about 40% of the way to the equivalence point. And the pH has barely changed. Um, this just has to do with the fact that pH is log-based. You gotta really change the concentration by like factors of 10 in order to get the pH to really shift by say a whole unit or so. Um, it hasn't really moved a whole lot because um, we still, we started with 0.2, we're now down to 0.11. We're not even half, we don't, the concentration hasn't even decreased by a factor of two, much less a factor of 10. So really just hasn't changed a whole lot. So we are not yet at the equivalence point here. Um, we still have an HCl solution. It's just at a lower concentration than we started with, but it is still uh, not a non-zero concentration. So in general, when you plot out the pH of a strong acid-base titration, you get this characteristic S shape, um, where the pH, you slowly add base, you add base, the pH doesn't change a whole lot, then all of a sudden you hit the equivalence point and the pH makes a huge jump. Um, and then once you get past the equivalence point, again, it starts to slow down how much the pH is going up. The pH is constantly increasing because you are constantly adding base, but it doesn't go up by a ton until it starts to really, really spike up. And, you know, the reason why is that the pH has to change by a ton. We saw in the calculation, we were, you know, it's a quarter of the way there or half the way there. We still only changed by a factor of two. Because the pH is a logarithm scale, you have a factor of 10 in order to change the pH unit by one. So at 90% of the acid being consumed, the pH changes by one unit. Um, so that's why you get this really big jump because it's going from 90 to 90% 90 consumed to 99.9, 99.99, right? Those changes get smaller and smaller and you get these huge jumps in the pH, just absolutely huge changes uh, in the pH uh, in the jumps of the pH that you're getting. Um, I do also want to point out that halfway to the equivalence point is called the midpoint. So midpoint is uh, the journal language I'm gonna use, the book uses, sapling calls it the half equivalence point. Those mean the same thing. Basically the equivalence point is the volume, you've added the exact same number of moles as you started with. So the midpoint is when you've added half of the moles you started with. So half equivalence point is a bit better of a name, but midpoint is a lot more commonly used. You're halfway to the equivalence point, you're midway there. Um, if we wanna think at the midpoint, half of the acid is gone. Um, and the total volume has roughly doubled. Um, so we know guaranteed half the acid is gone. The volume doubling is kind of another effect. But so what that means is that the concentration of hiberniums generally goes down by about a factor of four when you hit the midpoint. Um, this is approximate that I'm just kind of making. But you know, what you can see is that when you do this kind of process, you do that 0.0, you do take it to the quarter, pH to midpoint, you just get, you know, 1.3 or something, small, small changes. 
Um, it's just really hard to get changes in age. Even at the midpoint, you really just haven't done a whole lot of an effect. Um, so you really don't see a lot of changes um, in the pH. Uh, just, it's just really hard to get the pH to change until you get right up on the equivalence point, and then the pH changes real fast. Um, but until that, uh, it just really is pretty flat. So um, we can kind of take the overall uh, kind of view of what's going on here. And then, you know, we're really, we call these reactions HCl with NaOH is what's going on. But we know that strong acid solution, when you have HCl in the solution, that it doesn't actually exist as HCl. Instead, you have hydroniums uh, that have fully been created. It's a strong acid, so you make all those hydroniums. And you have hydroxides in the dissolved NaOH. And they combine to give you water. That's really the reaction you're doing here. Um, and just this whole kind of plot out then of the pH as you're moving through these different uh, phases is really just kind of describing what's going on in the solution. So um, when you start out the solution, you have an acidic solution. And we know acidic um, is the same thing as just saying that you have more hydroniums than hydroxides, right? So initially, you have more than that. At the equivalence point, what is equivalent is the hydroniums and hydroxides, right? The amount of acid that's in there. Um, and the amount of base that you've put in. And they cr those create hydronium and hydroxides, so those are equal amounts. That's why you get a neutral solution. Okay? Um, whereas then past the equivalence point, you have more base, becomes a basic solution. So titrations of strong acid, strong base, always have the same exact characteristic as shaped curve. Um, it doesn't matter what you start with. Um, if you start with slightly different concentrations, you're going to change that initial pH. Um, but the shape is always going to be the same. And importantly, the equivalence point always has a pH of 7. What exact volume the equivalence point occurs at is going to depend. But you're always going to have a pH of 7 at the equivalence point because you've added a strong acid and a strong base. You make a neutral salt and water. Um, the pH is always going to be 7 at the equivalence point. Um, if you do do the titration of a base with an acid, so for example, the titration of 0.2 molar NaOH with HCl, this is still strong base with strong acid instead, but you're adding the acid to the base. So the shape of the curve is the same, but you start with a strong base, add a strong acid, means the pH will decrease. So you start at a high pH and you decrease. You still have the same characteristic pH uh, curve, and the pH at the equivalence point is still going to be 7. Okay? You're still going to get exactly pH 7 because it's the exact same reaction. It's still NaOH and HCl. The equivalence point is just defined as having the same amounts, meaning all of the reactants are gone. All that's left is water, neutral salt. The pH has to be 7. All right. So. Talking about titration, strong acids, strong bases, I would like for you to try to work through a pH calculation. So in the titration of 42.0 milliliters of 0.15 molar KOH, what is the pH after 20.0 milliliters of 0 0.10 molar HNO3 has been added? Right, so this is the assignment, participation assignment to April 1st. This is question two. In the titration of 42.0 milliliters of 0.15 molar KOH, what is the pH after 20.0 milliliters of 0 0.10 molar HNO has been added? If you got any questions about that, please let me know. But make sure there was question one, it was in the last video. We got question two here. Um, make sure uh, you get the answers to those posted. That's going to do it for this uh, second video here, introducing on titrations. We've got a couple more topics on titrations. Want to complicate it up a bit as we move forward. Uh, there'll be a couple more questions uh, for this second participation assignment. Um, you want to make sure you get that answers up into Blackboard um, by April 1st uh, at, uh, that's not April 1st, it's due, April, uh, yeah, by April 1st, sorry, at uh, 11.55 uh, p.m. If you got any questions about that, let me know.